Hello, Wargamers, and welcome back to the, let's call it the Antique Board Game Show. Tonight, we have the American Heritage Game of the Civil War. This is the setup. Uh, what we have are each of these pieces. If you can see there, a cavalry and an infantry. So we have the cavalry and infantry pieces here. So these are set up according to the predetermined spaces as uh, published in the rules. And what we do for the basics, roll two dice, that's eight pips. That means we can move one infantry, four spaces for each pip. Is that right? No, that's not right. For eight pips, I can move one infantry piece, eight different pips or spaces, or I can move four infantry pieces, two squares, etc etc in any case for each pip the infantry can move one square for each pip a cavalry piece can move two squares and an artillery piece can move two squares now these red lines you see these are the railroads and if for example i took this infantry piece i would cost two pips to get to savannah and then it would take a third to get to atlanta where I could then disembark, and that would be four pips. Now, because I land on the mountain there, because I want to go north, I have to stop. I cannot go again until the next turn. So that's the basics of movement. Um, attacks. If there's a cavalry unit involved in the battle, they have to be in the front. And what you do is you form a line with your troops like so. And whoever is the stronger unit, so let's say we have two, four, five versus one, two, three. So the Confederates here would be able to initiate this attack by moving up against the Union troops. And then this unit here would leap all the way to the back and remove these two troops. Does that make sense? If, however, instead of this infantry unit, we had this artillery unit, the artillery unit can shoot, and then these two are removed without having to jump. Because what happens is that would leave that piece exposed out here. So, again, very simple, yet very subtle and nuanced. Cavalry, infantry, artillery. So, this looks to be a little bit trickier than I expected in terms of being able to play a solo game because obviously I can't fake myself out. So, what we've done is we're going to group these two sets of forces each into three basic armies. So, here on the Confederate side, we're going to start with the Army of the West, which will be these six pieces, or these five pieces here. This will be the Army of the West. And what we'll do is follow the instructions from William Sylvester in the Solo Wargaming Guide. And I have prepared a list of possible battle plans. So on a one to two, they'll be very aggressive. On a three to four, they'll just be aggressive. And on a five to six, they will play a more defensive plan. So the very aggressive plan will be to drive north to Iowa and then turn east, which would be like so, and then turn that way <clears throat> to drive into the heart of the Union forces. The second option, the simply aggressive option, would be take rail to Kentucky 
and then support the Army of the Atlantic. Uh, the Army of the Atlantic is this group over here, and their plans essentially are to move along the seaboard. And then their defensive battle plan would be to seize the rail at St. Louis and Fort Up. So St. Louis is here. So basically what they would do is come up here, take control of this rail area, um, and then and then just see what happens. The second unit going from left to right is the Army of the Mississippi, which will be these, these six units here. And for their possible plans, gather at Memphis and push on to Wisconsin. Memphis is here, so they would move towards Memphis and then drive straight north. The aggressive plan would be to gather at Chickamauga and push to the northwest. Now, Chickamauga is over here on the other side of the mountains, so these would likely move to Nashville. These would come to Chickamauga and then they would push in that direction. And then the defensive option is to fort up on the rails at Nashville, which again is right there. So those are the options for the Army of the Mississippi. The Army of the Atlantic will be these, uh, what, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, eleven units here. And for their very aggressive stance, their plan will be for half of them to cross the Blue Ridge Mountains and head towards Ohio and then turn east, while the other half will drive up the coast and attempt to catch the New England or the Northeastern Union forces in a pincher. So they would cross the Blue Ridge here at uh, Lynchburg. Half of them will go this way and then, and then the other half will move along the coast. The second plan will be simply to drive up the coast with half of the forces. The other half will cross the Blue Ridge as well, and then they will track to the northeast to screen the drive up the coast. So rather than moving into Ohio and potentially going west, depending, you know, to support these troops over here, this army over here, they would go and maintain that direction. And then for their defensive option, make a stand at Appomattox and Richmond, which Richmond is here, Appomattox is there. So those are the options for the Confederate forces. And bear with me for just a moment. I'm going to spin the board around and we'll discuss the options for the Union forces. Okay, so here I've turned the board around so we can get a northern perspective looking to the south. And again, I've divided the forces up into three armies. The Army of the Northeast will consist of these 11 pieces here. And their three options will be to, for one, gather at Philadelphia, which is here, and then drive south to Savannah, which basically, Savannah's down here where these dice are. So Savannah's here. So they would essentially cut through Maryland and then drive through the Carolinas to Savannah. The second option would be to gather at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is here, and then move on to Louisville, which is over here. So their, their, uh, that plan would be a little bit less aggressive because it would be supporting any actions that are going on here in the center with the Army of the Ohio Valley. The defensive option for the Army of the Northeast will be to fort up at Gettysburg and Washington. So Washington is here. I'm looking at this upside down. Where's Gettysburg? Oh, Gettysburg is just here. So basically they will fort up in this area um, to block any attempts for the Confederates to move north on either side of the mountains there. The Army of the Ohio Valley, 
their options are. Push through to Atlanta. So we'll have six six of these armies here, these these three clusters, and essentially their their uh, goal will be strike straight through down to Atlanta. And um, after that, probably encounter those Confederate forces down there. The second option is to join the Army of the Plains, which are these units here, to go ahead and try to take Nashville, which is right there. And then their defensive option is to fort up at Louisville, which is here. And then the third army over here, we have the Army of the Plains, and their most aggressive option is to seize the rail at Memphis, which is down here. And this would allow them to penetrate deep, deep into the south. Or a less aggressive option would be to join the Army of the Ohio Valley and assist them in taking Nashville, which is right there in the center. And again, there's a railhead there, so they'd be able to drive deeper into Confederate territory. And then finally, their defensive option would be to fort up at St. Louis, which is right here. Again, that still gives them a lot of options in terms of moving about uh, via rail. So those are the, what, 18 options that we have available to us that would wind up being What, six? Six tweets with polls. So if we want to do it that way, we can do it that way. If someone wants to play the North and maybe roll some dice, or if I have some folks that want to say, hey, I rolled the three for the Army of the Plains, so let's go ahead and take Nashville, we can do that. So what we'll do is, um, I don't know, we'll throw this out there and we'll see what happens. Leave some comments down below. I will go ahead and resume this game tomorrow, and if I don't have any volunteers or anybody jumping in in the comments to uh, to take on leadership of one of these armies, then perhaps uh, I'll just roll for it myself. But in any case, thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all come up with and how this all plays out. I'll see you again tomorrow.